Okay, so this is not something that, although it sounds very technical, it's not something that cannot be applied in everyday life. I, I walk by this, like Paul says, rule every day. I cannot live by my own power. Although I might uh, think that I'm very intellectual and smart or whatever, try and use, use your mind and try and apply things, I will tell you, you're going to find at the end of the day, oh my goodness, uh, death is manifesting in me. But as you know that it's only by his life you'll find life manifest in you. Romans 7, 2. For the woman which has a husband is bound by the law um, to her husband so long as what he lives. But if the husband has died, she's freed from the law of her husband or the law of husband. So what he's saying here is that before the death of Christ, we were married to death. But when Jesus entered death and was raised we now see that there is another way unto life. And since death was conquered, we are not standing in the power of our mortality anymore, but we are standing in the hope of the resurrection. And since we believe upon that, we are not walking under the power which forces us every day to have sin and death in our lives. Jesus conquered sin and death for us. Amen. Verse 3, so then, if while her husband, sin the flesh on account of its mortality, lives, so uh, she be married to another man, the law of Moses, trying to do good by the inner man or Jesus as the Messiah of a fleshly people group, um, she shall be called an adulteress. So what he's saying is, uh, and, and remember, the, the, when he talks about marriage here, he's not saying that we are literally married to the law. He's using an analogy. What he's saying is, if you are a mortal, and you stand in the power of mortal flesh, and you try to use life, you're going to see that you are still bearing the fruit of death in you. That's all he's saying. It's a very complicated way of simply saying, listen, as long as what you are a normal human being, and you try to live by the law, you're going to find that what your flesh truly is, which is dying, is manifesting in you. And you're going to find all these evil desires and all those things come forth in you, and you will not be able to control it. But if you have no confidence in your flesh, but in the one who has conquered the death of the flesh, and in the flesh of Jesus as the one that rules over you, you will find that that death dies away, sin dies away, and you find good fruit in your life. And that's why um, he says here that through the, uh, let's read verse 4, Wherefore, my brethren, you also became dead to the law, now referring to the law of Moses, by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So what he's saying is, is that Jesus died, and through his death, uh, we are now at a place where we don't have to say, I'm a Jew, I'm a Gentile, and I'm going to walk by the law, because it should I say that, there's a law in my members, in this body, there's a principle that says, you are mortal, and that is what will be in the end, mortality, temporal, that's all there will be, you're going to die. But, now that Jesus is raised from the dead, we don't have any confidence in Jew or Gentile or anything. We've got confidence in the resurrected Jesus. And he who, he knows how to aid our weakness. He knows how to give us life. And therefore he poured out the spirit of promise or the spirit of life whereby we have life. <laughs> Glory to God. Um, he goes on in, and I, I think I'm about to to just wrap this up for today, because if we get into this deeper, we are starting to touch on a different point, and I think I need to talk about that next week. But let us just wrap this up, and we're going to read verse um, 4, 5, and 6 here. It says, Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law, now referring to the law of Moses, by the body of Christ, that we should, not be, married, that we should be married to another, even to him that is raised from the dead, that we should... Uh, bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, married to death in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were revealed or made manifest by the law of Moses, did work in our members 
to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held. In other words, we are delivered from the principle that says, you shall for sure bring forth fruit unto death. We are delivered from that through the death and the resurrection of Jesus, through the new creation. And we can see, we cannot modify the old. The point I want to make here is this. You cannot modify the old. You cannot say, well, I'm going to modify my mortal flesh and sin in the flesh by trying to live a holy life. I cannot do that. That is impossible. Uh, I needed a bodily recreation from the dead. And that is what God has provided. And what that rec recreated body brings and the new creation which is above death not mortal gives us is the hope of the same in God fulfilling his promise of eternal life to whosoever believes him through the man Jesus Amen let me explain this way God promised us eternal life man is mortal God brought forth a man Jesus through whom he will fulfill what he has promised us. So we that see this resurrection already, what do we do? We stop to put our confidence in the flesh and in the law, and we put our confidence in the one raised from the dead. And as we put our confidence in the one raised from the dead, what happens? We are standing in the union of the life of his flesh, and then we starting to see how the deeds of sin is mortified in our flesh and how we start to live a holy life. That's what Paul is trying to communicate in these passages. Glory to God. So, in conclusion, you cannot modify your dying self by trying to live by the law. Don't do that. Don't try and modify if you, and let's make it very practical, if you see anything in your life that's not supposed to be there, uh, anger, uh, uh, lies, fears, um, any depression, sexual immorality, drunkenness, whatever you struggle with, whatever your problem is, a fear of not having money, whatever it is, don't think, well, I need to modify this body. No, you cannot modify it. The only thing you can do is to see your union with life through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Also, if and the true context of this was the law of Moses and the Jews and all those kind of things, if you are a Jew watching this, don't find any confidence in the fact that you of physical descent are a Jew, that, that you're Jewish and that you think now, I, because I'm a Jew, God is going to, you know, do something special for me because I'm a Jew. Now, in the moment you say that you put your confidence in the flesh and you stand in your union with the flesh and that is your righteousness. I've got a right to be helped because I'm a Jew. I've got a right to be helped by God because I'm a Jew. No, that's not how it works. It will worsen your situation. Uh, what you do is you see the resurrected Jesus and you say, I've got no confidence in my own ability. I've got no confidence in my flesh. I've got no confidence in my ability to keep the law. I have seen the more I try to keep the law, the more I fall into death and destruction. All I do is I say, the man Jesus was raised from the dead. He's put me at a place where I can trust him and not my flesh. And as you do that, you find life in you doesn't matter what the situation is. I mean, if I look at my own self, at, at my own life, you know, I, I look at, um, you know, th there may sometimes things happen in this world that is outside of your control. And you think, well, that's not right. What's right is this and this and this and these following things. So I'm going to see what's right and I'm going to use my power and I'm going to do what's, what's right and set this right. And then you find it doesn't work. The best thing you can do, and this is what I do every day of my life, God has given me life. And life is greater than death because God has raised Jesus from the dead and broken the power of death over my life. And I am confident in him. He sorts my life out. And then I rest in him. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for watching and just... Let the concept of the resurrection and the truth of it be 
the rule whereby you live. Amen. God bless.